Mini has always been one of those iconic car brands. Their cars are instantly recognisable, and even if someone doesn't have any clue about this British brand, chances are you'll hear them go, Wow, that's a cute car! This 5-door one is the brand's entry model into the Mini family, now with a modern facelift to boast about. Question is, is it an appealing choice for customers looking for a more practical Mini? This is a good looking car. I like how they kept the facelift minimalistic and clean, but still give you that design language for Mini that people come to know and love. Most of the styling changes are up front, the car now sporting a new, larger front grille with black trim. Almost looking like a gentleman with a well-maintained moustache. The fog lights are also absent, now replaced by these new air intakes. This Mini one comes with cool 17-inch two-tone alloy rims. And this is one of the nine rim options available, which you can customise, ranging from 17 to 18 inches. This test unit is also finished in island blue. I've always liked the bright and funky colours that Mini offers for their cars, making them look like M&Ms. For boot space, you get 278 litres. And while it is larger than its three-door sibling, it isn't the most practical thing in the world, and I foresee issues carrying around larger or bulkier items due to this narrow boot opening. It's not the most practical thing in the world, but hey, it works. You can go NTC, you can do it in this car. Also, if you wanted a flat floor, you could do this. Makes it easier to unload and load items. And if you really wanted more space, you could fold down the seat 60-40. Mini even has this cool app, where you can view stuff like your service history, your vehicle mileage, and your remaining fuel level. You can even remotely control your car from this app. And you can do stuff like unlock or lock the car doors, and turn on the headlights. But the best feature on this app is the vehicle finder, where it actually pinpoints the last loan location of your Mini, so you'll know exactly where you parked it. Inside, everywhere you look, there are circles. Aircon vents, door handles, centre display, speakers, cup holders, you get the idea. The front seats are really comfortable and offer good bolster support while cornering. And I'm happy to report that this very nice Chester leather finish and sport seats all come as standard on this car. It's so nice in fact, that the only disadvantage is that you do not get electric seat controls. You get this very meaty and commanding steering wheel, which personally feels a little too big for the Mini 1. Maybe if they made it a little smaller, it would be just nice, and more proportional compared to the rest of the cabin. Other than that though, this is a very solid steering wheel, and you do get simple, easy to understand function buttons. No pedal shifters though in this model, those only being offered on the more feisty and range-stopping Cooper S. Keeping in trend with the aesthetic, this is a rather funky looking instrument cluster. It is not fully digital, but it sort of gives you the illusion that it is, with Mini doing a good job trying to conceal this analog rev counter. The left is a standard RPM gauge, while the right is the biggest fuel gauge I've ever seen in any car. You will never have to worry about forgetting to refuel in this car. Now some of you might want to shift the steering wheel column in order to get a better view of the instrument cluster, but in this, the instrument cluster actually moves with the steering wheel, a design trait that mini cars have. You get a very responsive 8.8-inch .8 touchscreen that is very easy to use. And for whatever reason you don't want to use the touchscreen, you still get traditional buttons and rotary dials. Thank God! That means you can change the music with ease like this, and not like this, that you get in other cars. The central display that surrounds the touchscreen provides very cool ambient lighting while driving. It is a styling gimmick of course, but it can definitely entertain your passengers with a setting that allows you to monitor how much throttle or braking you are applying while driving. You do get Apple CarPlay in this car, but no Android Auto. So if you're one of those people that gotten their hands on the brand new iPhone 13, you're in luck. I'm an Android person, uh, so... Oh yeah, check this out. You do get native navigation in this car, which is actually an increasingly uncommon feature in new cars nowadays. Plus, with the Mini app, you can actually input your destination on your phone, and then this can be sent remotely to the car via the app. There are dials and buttons for your aircon and other controls, but my absolute favourite feature are these switches, which makes me feel like a pilot in a cockpit. I know, I know, this is a very, very small design trait, but it makes me feel cool. The centre console is rather... mini, and you can't really fit anything inside it. It does make a good armrest though, as the centre console is quite low. While the front of the Mini 1 is really comfortable, the same cannot be said for the rear. Even though this technically is a 5-door hatchback, space in the back is really a premium. Now as you can see, the driver's seat is tailored to my driving position, and it is very cramped for my passenger. 
even though you do get three seats in this car and three seat belts. The middle seat should only be used in emergencies. You do not get any legroom at all due to this race center console, meaning the middle guy will have to jostle and wrestle for legroom with the other two passengers. So while you can technically ferry five people in this car, it is better to just keep your group size to four. Don't expect much oomph from this car, as it only has 101 brake horsepower and 190 Nm of torque, all of which is sent to the front wheels. Even though it can do the sentry sprint in a leisurely 10.6 seconds, it doesn't feel slow when getting off the line. One thing I do like though is this well-weighted steering. It has this go-kart-like quality to it, and you can really feel the car as you go through twisty corners. Even though this is a very fun car to drive, the same cannot be said when cruising on straight roads. The car does feel twitchy at higher speeds, and that can make you feel nervous in situations like if you're on the fast lane on the expressway. However, if you're someone who likes a more light and weightless steering feel, this Mini might not be a cup of tea. The new suspension also works well in tandem with the steering, giving you a very smooth controlled ride, unlike its predecessor, which was known for its harsh ride. Visibility is great in this car, and because of the thin pillars and windows all around, you will have no trouble checking your blind spots. Fuel economy is decent too. I've been driving this car for a few days, and it averages out to about 9.5 litres per 100km. As with all modern cars, the Mini 1 comes with a variety of safety features such as lane departure warning, a driving assistant with pedestrian warning, and collision warning. Because of its small size, the Mini 1 is very easy to park. Plus, to make life easier, you do get a very sharp rear view camera and parking sensors. I gotta be honest, after spending a few days with the Mini 1, I am really starting to like this car. It is nimble and fun to drive, and even though it is small, it is still very practical in most day-to-day -day situations. You don't have to go fast to have fun in this thing. If you're in the market for a premium hatchback, you'll probably pick the Audi A3, BMW 1 Series or Mercedes A-Class. But if you want something unique, something that stands out from the crowd, something that is blue in a sea of red, then this Mini might be for you. It's like when you're buying a new phone and you don't pick the standard black or white, but instead pick the nice and colourful option. You don't necessarily like the colour, but you pick it because it's special, because it looks cool. The Mini 1 5 door is a very enjoyable driver's car. Plus, you get the functionality of two extra doors and a bigger boot than its three-door sibling. Have your cake and eat it too. That's it for me. Do remember to like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next M review.